I have been working with a couple for about eight months and I have the thought for the last few months that the husband struggles with either narcissistic traits and or personality disorder. With EFT, how does the therapist approach these traits and symptoms? So eight months is a long time and that gives you good rationale to say to the couple, reflect the process reflect your observation. My efforts to work intrapsychically with you haven't been successful. I'm thinking of how narcissism holds out new information that doesn't fit with their worldview or their view of themselves. So I'm not able to come close enough and actually come alongside and work intrapsychically with you. And we've been trying this for a while. And so I'm feeling worried that I'm not able to get traction in the way I know I need to get to work well on your behalf and to work well on your marriage's behalf. Have you noticed that? Has the partner noticed that? What do we want to do about that? And maybe they say, well, why is that? What meaning do you have? And this is where it gets even dicier because I don't want to label anybody but I also need to be able to reflect my observation. Sometimes it feels like when I'm needing to work with you intrapsychically and to get you focused on your own vulnerabilities, that feels like the last place you wanna go. And essentially, I think you're telling me, oh no, we don't need to go there. I don't have any vulnerabilities. Narcissists are famous for not having vulnerabilities. I can't find your vulnerabilities. And that's what EFT is all about, making safe space for your vulnerabilities. And I can't get yours on the table. Could we please talk about this process of me going on the reconnaissance mission with you to find your vulnerabilities? and to help you talk about them here initially and then eventually at home. How would that be? What would that be like? That's just a start. But what that does is it gets the clinician and this kind of client in a process conversation about where are their vulnerabilities. Yeah, I love that. And it reminds me of other things you've said that like when you're at an impasse and in in this kind of impasse as well, you make a process comment. Yeah. So you talk about what's happening. Like as a clinician, you don't have to do magic behind the curtain and then deliver it, you know, the package of secure attachment to your clients. You yeah. say, hey, this is where we're stuck. This is what I need in order to progress. If this becomes a real clear limitation or a real clear limitation of someone's humanity or someone's character, then you help the couple work together with this limitation. So say someone has a stroke or a traumatic brain injury, Or then you might even have to be brave eventually and say, I get worried about some narcissism here. I get worried about not being able to get any um, revision in these ways. So that's kind of my last resort is to name it that way. They love each other, which is awesome. But then they're going to need your help to learn how to work together when that narcissism or that narcissistic trait comes alive and comes in the space between them. Yeah, they have to name it. It has to become explicit. Yes, and and though we stray away from labeling people and narcissism is a hard label to hear about oneself, maybe they'll bring it forward and then you have more permission to work with it. I would also worry and wonder about an echo of trauma. I mean, like, I don't know the research. I don't know that I believe people are born narcissistic. I'm not sure. And everyone's entitled to their own experience, but that people become narcissistic as a way to cope by themselves and as a way to protect themselves. And when no one else protected me, I had to protect myself. And then it becomes a a habit and then the habit becomes extreme. Yeah, it could be an echo of trauma that that, to separate the defense from who they are. And so when we're saying make it explicit, it doesn't necessarily mean using the word narcissism. We could use the phrase echoes of trauma. We could use the phrase dragon or the word dragon, like when the dragon comes online, whatever. Yeah, self-protection. It's a defense to protect. That's That's where my mind quickly goes to enduring more than most Enduring stuff without protection, like, wow, I I would get pretty rigid defense, self-defenses myself. Yeah. Self-protective defenses, all those right words. Yeah. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.